At the age of 23, I became a priest. Still just a snot-nosed kid, and I was supposed to be a shepherd of souls. I felt I was meant for this. I had answered the call. If God was with me, then who could be against me? I was full of conviction, faith that I could make the world a better place. But the world <laughs> had other plans. Many times, I performed someone's last rites. I held their hands as they died. And in that last moment, in the millisecond before their last breath, I saw in them relief. Not because they were moving on to some kind of better world to heaven, but because it was the end of something painful. They could finally bow out of the futile and exhausting dance of life. Their chore of living would be over. Their suffering would end. It was something completely incomprehensible to me. How can a person reject the gift of life? To accept death joyfully. For a person as strong as me, this was something very disturbing. Or maybe they knew about something that I had not seen. Did they see it in their last moment? This was the first crack in the edifice of my faith. And then, the epidemic started. There's a term for what came next. A crisis of faith. And with me, it started long before the epidemic. But when people started to turn into monsters, when city after city was eaten by darkness and poison, I started to wonder, where is God? Is he putting us through a trial? Or has he abandoned us? When Black Monday came, I no longer had any doubts. There is no God. There never was. Because of the THV Genmog bombings, two million people lost their lives. The streets carpeted with human corpses. What God would allow that? He would have to be infinitely cruel. Of course, other so-called men of the cloth offered nonsensical observations that this was the will of God. Punishment for our wickedness that Colonel Williams himself served as the hand of God. But that didn't matter anymore. The curtain had been torn off. People lost their faith. Because what were they supposed to believe in? No one wanted a god like that. And in that moment, to my own surprise, I felt free, as if I were a puppet who finally cut the strings that controlled him since birth. Free at last.